Welcome to Down to Herf, the podcast for cigar smokers, whiskey drinkers, and for the people just looking to kick back, light up, and have a good time. I'm your host, Jerry, and I'm joined by, as always, my co-host, Gio and Caleb. Fellas, 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 how are we doing on this fine Sunday fun day? Caleb, what's up? Dude, excited to be here. We got a banger cigar that we already lit up and started to smoke. And we got some great whiskey, as always, too. So I'm ready to get this show started. Let's go. Gio, what's going on, man? How was your day? Good, man. Good, man. Excited. What's up, Hustler Universe? Yeah, seriously. Hustler Universe, what is going on? How is everybody? Hopefully you guys are as good as we are tonight. About to get into a real crazy cigar, but first, let's uh, talk about ourselves a little bit, man. Let's let's let these people know what we're all about. Caleb, what's going on, brother? All right, so I'm Caleb. I am like the goofball of the show, probably <laughs> next to Jerry, the most whiskey drinker guy on the podcast as well, just looking to get into some crazy good, crazy expensive whiskeys, and I am the cigar amateur to the show, um, notoriously high rater of cigars, so... Any cigar company <laughs> looking for a nice high rating, dude, hit me up. I'm your guy. I rate your cigar very well. You know, <laughs> shout out to the podcast. Shout out to you know whoever. I'll help you guys out with you know just send us some cigars. I'll I'll boost you up. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right. That I just I'm the funny guy. That's about it. Brutally, brutally honest when it comes to the uh, the high rating, yeah. right? Because like he is notoriously a high rater. It's it's actually scary. Our- like. Tatiana's are getting 91 overalls. <laughs> that ain't me. I'm not rating Tatiana. Our resident short king, tall ratings. Yeah, how come you didn't mention that you're the short king of the show? Oh, I, I don't know if you got a good angle on me today and I look a little taller, but we'll see. Short king. Anyways, guys, I'm Jerry. I am, uh, I guess, one of the three co-hosts of the show. I kind of run shit back here. All the, uh, you know, the soundboard, the... Uh, camera switch. The camera switch. I, I kind of do everything. Uh Host, producer, ringleader. <laughs> captain. G- Gio and Caleb kind of cap- summed it up cap- for me. The captain. Main character, energy. Oh, <laughs> oh, come on, dude. Nah, I'm just fucking with you. So that's a little callback to the past, but uh, yeah, listen, guys, I'm so happy to be here. This is going to be a lot of fun, and uh, if you guys got anything you want to ask us, you know, feel free to reach out. We're really, really good at uh, getting back to people that want to know about us. Uh, oh, yeah. we got we got to intro Gio as well, man. He's, yeah, he's got to tell. He's got to tell a little bit about himself. <laughs> and uh, without further ado, it's our uh, resident steroid user, oh, yeah. Giovanni. What That's is up, true. bro? What do these people need to know about you, man? Well, I'm Giovanni. I also go by Gio. So, I mean, I smoke a lot of cigars with this guy. I'm fortunate to have the pleasure of here for you guys that are new to the show, and it's you know, a bad but great habit. I have unfortunately spent a stupid amount of money on cigars. Hopefully I start spending less. But in the meantime, you know, I like to think of myself as kind of the stickler, like in terms of if we're talking about how we rate stuff. To get a 10, you got to blow it away. It's always how it's been for me. Uh, I talk too damn much and my burns are always a problem. (laughs) Well, I mean, that pretty much sums up Geo. He uh, really is a like a stickler when it comes to the ratings and getting high ratings is uh, not really in his uh, agenda. But uh, that being said, guys, welcome to uh, Cigar Hustler Universe, right? Hell yeah. This is going to be a lot of fun. New so. things moving forward. Uh, we're in season two, but, you know, awesome to have finally done on our one year anniversary. So this is big news for us. Awesome. Season 1.2? I don't know how this 2.1. 2.1. 2.2, <laughs> 2. 2. 2. actually. Probably I don't know. Makes more I don't sense. know. Uh, Dude, what do we got planned for the show, Caleb? All right, well, we got our intros done. Well, we got to get into our cigar. We got to get into our whiskey. Uh, We'll be doing a giveaway. We have our main meat subject of the show. And uh, we got a patrol gone wild as usual. And our cigar reviews to wrap things up. I feel like that was not what I meant for the show. But okay, so Caleb just (laughs) told you the entire show. So really, uh, I'm going to go right to Gio. Gio, what are we smoking on this episode, buddy? Because Caleb just went off on a crazy fucking... Well, he just I'll told the, the whole show. The real <laughs> thing here, just so people understand who haven't listened to us before, you know, obviously our uh, 
regular audience knows what we're about, but we review a cigar, we drink a whiskey with it, and then we have our little banter in between and a main topic that we get into. Please don't ever refer to our main topic as main meat. I don't know why. I was just really concerned. Yeah, dude, Caleb, it. that sounded super close to man meat. And <laughs> what do you mean by that? <laughs> main meat? What do you mean by that, dude? Well, yeah. I, I, man meat? I don't mean meat from Maine. I just mean like the main thing in the sandwich. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Never say that again. Yeah. We're, 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 <laughs> oh, we're getting right back into fucking roasting Caleb like we always do. Yeah. You you fuck that one up, dude. Oh, I know the cigar hustler guy is gonna roast me too. So. Well, you know what? You earned that one. Yeah, I pretty much do. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't ever refer to anything on this show as meat unless it actually is meat. All right. Anywho, Gio, what are we smoking today, buddy? Uh, I'm real excited for it. So this is actually a fun one. In honor of this episode, we left what we were going to smoke for our first uh, Hustler Universe episode to a poll. Narrowly beat out a very banger of a cigar that we will be smoking later. It was between this and the Anejo 3 by Alfonso. Another United product there. Those guys make some. But without further ado, we got the Davidoff Year of the Rabbit LE 2023. To give you some details about this, they come in a 10 count box. They are 5 15 16th by 54 because, you know, Davidoff has to have their bougie like sizes and it's never like couldn't be 7 8th. It had to be 15 16th. <laughs> <laughs> but to give you background about the Zodiac they, series, they kind of run on like the like their own system, Davidoff. Yeah, they do whatever the fuck they yeah, want. Yeah, they do what they want. They're Davidoff. And that's why they charge a fuck ton of money. So. Uh, for those who aren't familiar with the Davidoff Zodiac series, every year they release a cigar based on the Chinese Zodiac and, you know, whatever year corresponds to it. I believe 2021, last year was the year of the tiger, year of the ox before, before that. that, so on and so forth. Year of uh, the rat. Yeah, the year rat was what, four years ago? Shit. It's 2020. Almost four years ago. Shit. Yeah, and then 2021 was the year of the ox and then. 22 was the year of the tiger, and now 2023 is the year of the rabbit. Man, good thing there isn't no, like, Davidoff Zodiac Killers going around, like, back in the day. The Zodiac Killer? Let's just hope for that. Bruh. Oh, what like, are you man, talking you about? Just the Zodiac stretching. Killer. Bro, he's, he's reaching right now. I don't know what the hell he's reaching for. Gio, continue, please. All right, so this cigar is going to have an Ecuadorian Hybrid 238 wrapper. I could not find what that particularly means, but... An Ecuadorian wrapper is there. Um, basically, it uses a San Andreas Negro binder and a Nicaraguan and Dominican filler. Uh, these guys are incredibly, incredibly rare and expensive. A box of 10 will set you back 500 big ones. It means a single is 50 bucks. I do recall that uh, being purchased and literally wanting to puke in my own mouth because... We got six cigars <laughs> sent to us for two hundred and ninety dollars. Oh my god! It, what the fuck are we thinking? Well, I think that's a big question here too. That you know, for people who are just listening to us, and a lot of people don't. This is out of their budget. Well, well this ties into the 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 title of this episode, which is going to be Davidoff. You're the rabbit. Is it really worth the price tag? I guess we're going to find out, Caleb. I know right now we are pretty excited about the cigar. Gio got a little into that. What are we drinking today, brother? All right. We have right here a new one for us. It's called The Clover Single Barrel, and we have the Tennessee Straight Bourbon Whiskey. So this is out of Tennessee, of course. Um, produced out of, Not produced generally out of Tennessee. This is made with some undisclosed uh, Indiana whiskey and grains. Um, it has a very undisclosed mash bill. So it is aged four years. We got a 90 proofer. And this is named out of, after Bobby Jones, one of the most inf influential individuals in the sport of golf. Um, he's the only golfer to achieve the original Grand Slam, which means you win all four major championships. And he did it in the same calendar year in 1930, and he was only 28 years old. So he won the U.S. Open, British Open, U.S. Amateur, and the British Amateur. So the clover refers to a four-leaf medallion that his mother gave him. And each of the leaves stand for hope, faith, love and luck and that actually it says it on the side of the bottle so it's pretty cool um again they focus really heavily on distinct single barrel whiskeys uh they got their rye the whiskey and the bourbon all sourced from indiana um they initially launched in 2020 with a run of 24,000 bottles so pretty limited here 
Is this an MGP product? It says un- undisclosed. But you said source from Indiana. Indiana. Yeah. So I'm going to guess it is. Yes. So MGP. MGPI. Yeah. I'm going to guess it is. And um, <laughs> it just <Excuse> there. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. Yo, he's smoking crack. Yep. Coffee. So the primary factor that just makes this like a Tennessee whiskey is uh, because it has the Lincoln County process and part of it's how they roll it out and make it. So it's where the whiskey in maple sugar is infused in charcoal chips before it enters the cask. And the result is a complex aroma with a slight char to make a beautifully mellow whiskey. And it's got a nice golden amber color to it, I think, with that four years age as well. This stuff tastes really good. This is kind of like reminding me of the uh, the Jack Daniels bonded a little bit. I can uh, see that. I I know that this is an Indiana product, but I feel like that that Tennessee blend that they they bring into this, uh, yeah, is that Lincoln really, County process. It really is reminding me a little of the bonded. So I I know this was kind of like a a newer product, but this is kind of like one of those ones that seems to be like getting a lot of traction because I, I noticed. You never really heard of it, and then now everybody's getting these bottles, and you're like, they're kind of getting a little hype. So, I mean, I was really excited to do this bottle, and even more excited to do this cigar. So, I, I mean, let's see how they fucking pair, man. Should make for a great yeah. pairing. Yeah, I mean, this is a cool cigar, too, if you guys need another look at it, but should make a great pairing. And so, yeah, to touch on the actual, like, whiskey, when I first took a sip of it, I think I said that, like, it got, like, a honey taste to it, almost. Like, that's how I felt it was finished, so that, like process that you described caleb really seems to make sense uh last thing i also wanted to touch on on the cigars uh the reason though that davidoff actually charges a little bit more as well for the zodiac series i mean they're already really expensive but all tobacco in the zodiac series is already aged four and a half years Hmm. so that was something i wanted to bring up as well one of the things they started doing with this uh last couple runs of the zodiac series is the actual davidoff stores have an exclusive Vitola that's a little bit bigger. It's at more of a Toro size. Um, and they're limited to just 600 boxes. They set you back even further at 72 a stick. Holy <laughs> shit, dude. Wow. So I and guess only- this is going to come right back to that. Is it worth it? Because this is fucking crazy, man. Because uh, normally I get a stick like this. I throw it in the humidor. I'm like, yeah, I'll get to it for a special occasion. I don't know how many special occasions I have left, but I have enough <laughs> cigars to last me probably the rest of my life. Hey, uh, something to smoke for every birthday or every, you know, sort of family event that goes on. Also noting on that price point, the Clover goes for around 70 bucks. So not too bad. And um, I got a drink that you guys could make with this. Um, It's called the Bolvedar. And um, you would do one and a half ounces of the Clover whiskey, an ounce of Campari, um, you know, the Italian fortified wine, the red. And then you'd add an ounce of sweet vermouth and garnish with an orange twist. So... I don't know. It sounds like an interesting drink. I'd be up for trying that. I'd definitely be up for trying it. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah. not really sure. What, 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 what is surprised the, you'd... the Italian thing you just said? Campari. Campari? It's Campari? just a mixing. Yeah. Like, it's like liquor. a fortified wine liqueur. Okay. Yeah. It sounds I'm good. Ju- I'm just surprised you didn't say an old-fashioned or a Manhattan. Nope. So, yeah, this is our <laughs> notorious old-fashioned Manhattan guy. Uh, I mean, I guess it would make a great <laughs> <laughs> or old-fashioned. There it is. There it is. It would. It's got a little sweetness to it. Can you guys taste that? I mean, I definitely, that's where I got the honey. I got a little fruitiness sweet. Uh, What about you, Jerry? I have to be completely honest with you. My senses are a little fucked up right now because somebody at work got me fucking sick. Geo, fucking dickhead. The guy's been sick with the sniffles for fucking four days. I finally am like, all right, Sunday. Just make it to Sunday. Don't get sick. I wake up today. I'm like, fuck. (laughs) So for any of you guys out there, you know what I'm talking about. Fuck. This shit sucks. Is there anything worse? Is there anything worse? I mean, I work from home, so if I get a sick day, it's because I'm really in bad shape. I'm not so. looking for sick days. I'm talking about just like you wake up. What, like what? And you, feel na- and you feel like you just don't want to get out of bed? You don't want to do... No, it's not that. I just, just have the sniffles. So like my taste is all fucked up. Oh, well, I mean... I don't want to say it too loud because people are probably going to think I have COVID-19. <laughs> wink, wink. Stupid. COVID. COVID. You should have got, you, got your shot, man. Yeah, I should have got my shot. Should have. I'd have a lot worse problems than the sniffles. Also to note on this uh, Clover bottle, um, the reason why it gets a lot of hype, especially this time of year, is that Bobby Jones also is one of the founders and helped design 
Augusta National Golf Club, and the Masters is coming up, so generally gets a lot of hype around this time of year. So, so yeah. I haven't really followed the Masters this year. I I I rarely follow golf um, to like. Listen, I follow the majors for the most part, right? So I haven't really watched any like winners or anything. Uh, so I really I couldn't tell you who's hot, who's not right now. Obviously, I'm not really you know trying to sit here and talk about golf for the yeah. next hour, but. That is pretty cool. I mean, that is a world famous, you know, golf course. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You're it's, talking about the biggest, the biggest tournament of the year, kind of. Right? I think so for sure. I say that or the U.S. Open. I agree. I, don't know. I yeah. haven't been following golf. I'm an LIV guy. Not really. Yeah, you're a big, <laughs> big, big live guy over here. I like that. I've just stopped. I've been, Capitalism. I've been really, finest. I've been really not following golf as much. You got. Hockey season wrapping up, basketball getting in the playoffs, and baseball just started. So I don't know. Golf's on my on the back burner. Listen, the most important thing at the end of the month is happening, and that's the NFL draft. That's the sport thing. Why? Because go Bills. Well, we have our smokes, we have our drinks. That's typically how we're going to do things every episode. Uh, from there, we're going to pretty much get into a topic. And what is this week's topic, Geo? Well, I thought this was more than appropriate just because of the randomness of it and the place of all people, countries to do this. Mexico has instituted as of this Jan- last January a public tobacco ban. So that, you cannot- that came in effect this year in yeah, January. January. So it's just, yes, three months ago. Right. I didn't even hear about this. Like, I didn't even know this happened. And... Just randomly combing the internet, I found this and was just perplexed because, of all things Mexico is worried about, it's tobacco. <laughs> that's that's why I didn't really understand. When you when you told me about it, I was like, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, Mexico, yeah, tobacco. You know, like you, the, the, very, the very few things that they should be worrying about, that yeah. this is one of them? Hey, listen, you don't smoke this cigar in public, but hey, man, I can get you a great deal on a kilo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> everybody knows someone in mexico like if you're a resident of mexico you know someone who's probably involved with the cartels whether it's a business whether it's actually directly working for them a crooked you know politician or something and it's like of all things you're gonna ban tobacco and cigarettes in public all public parks places restaurants even the beaches like are you kidding me so outdoor space free space for everyone my question is this how is this going to affect tourism in mexico because i mean i feel like their economy relies heavily on american tourism so and and you know americans dude if there's one thing you can count on it's we're taking advantage of the all-inclusive drinking of alcohol true and men typically are going to want to smoke a couple stogies fair absolutely well the thing is like what makes no sense whatsoever is like cigars are such a huge part of latin american culture latin culture in general there is literally a rapper mexican san andreas rapper so yeah what are they gonna do about that in mexico the thing is they can produce all of this stuff but it it just doesn't make any sense to me and that just proves that there's such an oddball war on tobacco It, it really just is very strange to me but what I don't understand is this, and I know we've brought this up on previous shows, obviously to our new audience, this is going to be something that, that they, from us, are hearing for the first time. Why is there such a war on tobacco, but yet there's this, like, leniency going toward other drugs in, like, marijuana? So, like, what I mean by that is you could go and fucking be praised for smoking weed i mean we have fucking little tents in the united states now that you can literally do needle exchanges for heroin but if you want to fucking go out there and purchase a premium cigar why is that such a big deal i just don't understand why this is becoming such an issue because there always has to be some bad guy Mm -hmm. and it's easy to blame (laughs) big tobacco because it doesn't have a face tobacco can't advertise on public airways they can't advertise in movies the way you would like if you see a guy smoking in a movie it's a big deal because it i believe automatically has to be rated r or they are automatically assumed to be the bad guy in the movie like you rarely see a good guy smoking a cigar in a movie it's all it could be a main character but they're usually bad like tony yeah. soprano some sort of mafia boss some criminal boss gone are the days you see fucking arnold sitting there 
<laughs> just ripping his goddamn fucking machine gun with the cigar hanging out of his fucking mouth, dude. Uh, like, what is that? Shame. Like, Predator. Yeah. Like, fucking all that. Like, but you don't see that shit no more. Like, it's definite. Like, I might be wrong on it. it has to be Radar. Right maybe, like, but you can't be a child front. Like, you can't have a PG movie that depicts smoking or anything like that. So maybe it's PG-13 even, but I know that the whatever rating association just changed that for... Not recently. This was years ago. But, yeah, it's just weird, the war on tobacco. I don't understand it. And, like, everything is based on, like, you know, how sensitive people are and offensive. Well, all right, you're fucking with something that's a big part of a minority culture right now. Like, cigars are literally, for example, for Hispanic people, a part of life. Tobacco is grown in Latin America. I feel like a lot of their economy depends on that. Oh, yeah. Well, in tourism, obviously, they're, 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 yeah. these countries are beautiful in these U.S. territories. Beautiful beaches. They're beautiful. I, I just feel like Mexico is essentially doing what America's doing. Just, it's Mexico. So it's like real extreme, real they, quick. They have <laughs> like, full-blown drug cartels. Nar- they're basically a narco state with like narco-sponsored terrorism. If you consider like... You know, cartel murders, terrorism in certain towns, uh, wars that break out between like the Sinaloa and other cartels. It's like, and you're worried about tobacco? Like, we're talking tobacco. We're not talking murders, cocaine, meth. But so, all sorts what, of drugs. what you're telling me is this, Caleb. I, could, I have a better chance of walking around with like an Uzi or like a Mac 10 machine gun in Mexico, shooting up a public bus, cocaine in my pocket. But if I have a cigar in my mouth, this is where the line is drawn. This is the hard line. Well, what's easy to say, though, is, too, this is a country like Mexico that obviously their government has trouble, you know, demonstrating. So it's easy to say, look it, we banned tobacco, but everything else is fucked up. <laughs> like, it's political posturing is all it is, because even... When you read up on this, because you look to see how the enforcement is, like, are people really being fined or thrown in jail over this? Well, didn't you say you you read, like, an article of somebody that was, uh, they were, like, on a vacation? Yeah. So, you kind of were explaining to me that the enforcement level of this uh, ban is, like, non-existent, non-existent right? Oh, yeah. yeah. So, it's a quote-unquote ban. It's a ban. Uh, so like it like what does that actually entail? That's why like I don't know how how deep we want to go into it, but I mean, what does this right. actually mean? All right, so here's the way I would describe. Are we talking it. jail time here? Or are we talking like fines? Like what are we talking about? Uh, I'm assuming it's a fine. I don't believe production. Really... Like is production and manufacturing illegal? No, it's like, just consumption in public. Consumption in public. Probably so, like, just the fine, I guess. Right. If yeah. it's in public, yeah. Right. yeah, I guess we should have probably specified that, right? I can't really find it. I'm looking on a site right now. I, I can't find anything about the penalties if you're given a ticket or summoned or whatever. I can't really find anything, but I do have some like background on why they initiated it. All right, let's hear it. Okay. All right, so the Federal Health Ministry of Mexico says that this new law will prevent 49,000 premature deaths and 300,000 cases of smoking-related illnesses over the next 10 years. That's what they say. Um, it is one of the most strictest anti-smoking policies in the world right here, uh, which is crazy because, again, we said how interesting <clears throat> crime-ridden Mexico can be. Mexico doesn't even accurately track their crime statistics. <laughs> right? That's the fucked up. But they can accurately <laughs> track the, or predict deaths. I, I guess so, man. Um, also to note that a lot of Mexicans do think that this is a very draconian law. By nature, they say this is insane that it would even get passed and brought about. And it is also funny. They say that um, one in eight people in Mexico do smoke tobacco. So it's that's a that's a pretty strong number considering yeah. that Mexico is a country of sixteen million people. So one in eight smoke tobacco. It's or only cigarettes. sixteen million people in Mexico. I don't know how accurate it is, but that's what this article says, and this is a BBC article. What so. do we have in the United States? 375 million? Something like 390 that. 390 million? At least 320. Like, what? Hey, that bro. was like a guess. I, I don't, yeah. I've never actually looked it up. I mean, I'm you're not probably sitting, You're probably really close. I, I don't work for the fucking uh, United States <laughs> Census over here, so uh, this is obviously a, a guess. It probably is. You're probably really close now. It's yeah. since, uh, 20, since 2020. I don't know, That man. was the last census uh, three years ago. Just people are dropping dead here. Dropping dead, yeah. So, yeah, it's uh, like I said, it seems like one in eight. That's a pretty high numbers for being a smoker. 
of, of either cigars or cigarettes. What's, okay. What's it in the United uh, States? Hold on. Uh, I don't know. Per person. I don't know where that article got their figure out. Because I just Googled the population of Mexico. It's 126.7 There we go. Million. Oh, That's okay. why I was like, okay. what? All right. So the, that would be my, one in eight. My, yeah, what? So 16 million people are smokers in Mexico. There you yeah. go. Okay. So there there you, you go. I was like, there's something wrong. I read, yeah. I read, it, I read it wrong, too. I, I would... Uh, 16 million? That's a how, lot. How the fuck? We would just run. <laughs> That's California. Run a, yeah, we would run a truck over them. Like it would be. It wouldn't even be funny. The cartel would win. <laughs> yes. Yes. One hundred percent. I'll see how many uh, U.S. smokers are uh, tobacco and cigarettes. Uh, I'll, we'll, just to compare numbers. That would probably be very. It's got to be declining because aside from New Zealand, which instituted that generational smoking ban, I think this is like the next craziest. Well, AB nine thirty five in California. You said that. It, didn't pass um so it went to committee and it never went to a vote so okay it's so that was the, the generational tobacco ban california. in california so it's in the fucking um circulation but usually if it doesn't go to a vote so it's still out there yeah it's on its last legs so to speak okay i mean because th- like that's kind of like put it this way if like a hail mary would require it to pass like California has a better chance of getting a Republican governor than this bill passing. Well, that's that's my point. I mean, yeah. like this is absurd to think that a country or could have states that operate independently from the rest of the country and just say, "Hey, listen, we don't want you guys smoking fucking like Californians. We don't want you guys smoking tobacco if you're born." I, I would guess the grandfather date would be the day it passed. Anything after that could never smoke tobacco or purchase tobacco, right? Uh, I'm assuming. Well, I think they were talking about anyone born after 2000, like eight or nine. Yeah. Wouldn't wouldn't yeah. yeah, but 2008 or nine. Yeah, that's what I think it said. 2007. So you're not even grandfathered yeah. in. No. Yeah, I think I think we said when we discussed that it was 2007, eight or nine. Geo's really close there. In that range. So you you couldn't even be grandfathered in. Correct. Correct. But the fucked up thing is, I was also reading into it. They didn't have any punishment for smoking, possessing. <laughs> You just can't buy it. Why is Gavin Newsom such a fucking asshole? That I just don't suck. understand. It that... would suck so fucking bad yeah. to have him as your governor. Well, I'm sorry for any Californians <laughs> listening to the show, but God damn it. How the fuck can you? Oh, my God. It I would just need... suck to want to smoke in California if you were born after 2007. If like, What if you really enjoyed cigars or it was a family thing or a tradition? How or... old are you today if you're if you're 16? Yeah. yeah. You're 16, 16 years old, right? You're 16 if you're born in 2007. So technically, you got five more years if you could smoke. I guess you can't. But if you wanted to purchase tobacco and cigars in California, you technically couldn't, I guess. I don't like to get too political, but dude, this is like tiring. Like, it's tyranny, dude. It's crazy. It's crazy. And, and, and that's just California, okay? These guys are trying to put these bills in the, into effect. And then you got like uh, states like Florida, like where you, you could essentially just do whatever the fuck you want. Just don't drink and drive. That's yeah. very serious there. Yeah. Very, very serious. Yeah, zero tolerance. I like that, though. Yeah. I like that. Want to hear something fucked up? When I was in the Virgin Islands, there was, like, a rule that you could take your drinks to go and drive, but it just had to be in, like, a sealed container. Like, they had to have a lid on it with a straw. You know, I really did not anticipate you going with that. I thought you were going to say something different once you brought up Virgin <laughs> Islands. Yeah, he would just make one of those corny dad jokes that he always yeah. makes. Don't do it. Just, should do I do not do it? I have, no, I have no, one. No, I no, have no, one. No, 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 no. Pass me that clover. Right. Though. But I do. I I'm do. Into my I, I have here. a joke though. Third pour. Third. Third pour. Oh yeah, that's that right. Chug. Yeah, yo, yeah. I did. I just took one straight, straight to the face. Homie needed to get a little uh, loose. Well, I mean, hey, these people deserve entertainment, and right. if. By me getting fucking crippled drunk on the fucking show <laughs> is what they need to fucking be entertained. I Consider lo- it done. I love that for you. I Consider love that. Consider it done. I love that for all of us. And I do have those numbers on uh, American smokers. So if you guys want that, um, yeah. Out of the whole population, this gives estimated 325 million in America. It says nearly 40 million U.S. adults are tobacco smokers, cigarettes, cigars combined. So all right. So essentially, uh, one eighth. Pretty much, I guess. Yeah. I'm not too good with math. I mean... I can pull out the old calculator. It will be 320 by by 40. More than double what uh, Mexico has. I mean, I feel it's like... It's eight. 
It's one eighth. Oh, perfect. One eighth of our population. It's the same as Mexico. Perfect. And coincidentally, that was no calculator, by the way. Oh, I. Coincidentally, at first it wasn't no calculator. Then I double checked my math. It is one eighth yeah. directly. And coincidentally, what you know is common about the U.S., Mexico, and Latin American countries. Oh wait, growing tobacco was a fucking major crop that actually helped build this country. Tobacco road in the Carolinas. Yeah. Hell, tobacco grows in fucking Pennsylvania and Connecticut. That Connecticut broadleaf. Speaking of which. Mexico, the Dominican. Mexico. That's San Andreas. God, we, lo- we love a San Andreas rapper on the show, Fucking man. Mexicans, dude. Bro, San Andreas binder. Also, just to touch on this, I got, this thing is fucking holding up fantastic. So we're in about a third right now. Uh, this thing. Remember. This is a fifty dollar MSRP cigar. So in New York, you're looking at eighty. You're looking at nah seventy, like seventy five bucks. It's crazy. It's it's absurd. So, what do you think so far, man? It's pretty good for anybody out there that hasn't smoked a cigar. Okay, you're on the fence. You really want to know. This is where we're gonna kind of get into that. Like, do we really believe it's worth that price tag? I mean. Construction wise, this thing is holding up beautifully, which I shit on Davidoff in the past because a year of the ox, sixty dollar cigar, more expensive than this three year three years ago, two years ago? Two years ago. But now I gotta say, I, I prefer this Vitola over the year of the ox. Yeah, the year of the ox was it was like a, a fat boy. It was a six by sixty? Yeah, it was a big cigar. Yeah. And that thing exploded. Do you think it was because we smoked it in the cold? And I hate to bring that up, but like it, is. it was kind of uh, like it was a little nippy in here, right? It's possible. Do, but do you want to you want to give it the benefit of the doubt, or do you just want to just like shit all over it? Because I think we did the Davidoff year of the the or, Churchill. Yeah, we did the late hour. Yeah, and uh, how did that rate? Do we know, Caleb? I'll look back at it. Yeah, yeah, like I'm, Caleb, I'm Caleb's back. our record keeper as well, so he he always knows, uh, you know, if we have to go back in time. That was pretty early in season one. Yeah, yeah, okay. I would say that was, like was pretty a, early, like early last year. First ten episodes. Okay, yeah. yeah, just so I know where to look. Yeah. yeah. Now I will say I don't. I remember my rating not being very high on that. I wasn't a big fan of the late hour. I feel like that's kind of crazy because I I feel like I really love that cigar, hey, and man. I think we had it in the Robusto. Different so. strokes for different folks. Okay, yeah. I got it right here. Listen, yeah, how, how dude, did it rate, dude? This was episode six. Okay, I knew it was first time. Um, I gave it an eighty-nine. Um, appearance, I gave it a seven. Burn nine. Construction ten. Draw nine and a half. And enjoyment nine. I'm sure if I had to resmoke that, a lot would probably change. Did you have rating. our ratings? I no? didn't. We didn't. That's when we yeah, didn't share we weren't ratings. we weren't really doing it like that. But you gave it an eighty-nine, so I would assume yeah. I was kind of like right there, maybe a, a point Gio, lower. Probably a little lower. Yeah. And Joe, yeah. uh, or I think G- I was, was probably a little lower. Yeah. Low eighties? Could have been. What I want to say, man. Dude. Sounds about right for a Geo review. If I rated eighty nine. All right. So if, if I so want eighty nine, Geo probably want eighty five or below. I'm gonna go. So ahead. this Davidoff, Vitola and uh expression. Like what do you, what are you thinking? Listen, I'm a fan of Perfectos. Me like, too. Like I love Me too. this Vitola. And that is just something I like personally. I'm enjoying this cigar so far. What about you, Caleb? What are you thinking? I'm getting to like the halfway point. Again, I like this. The Vitola. halfway point, dude. I just got through the first third. Yeah, I oh, need to slow down. I need to slow down. Notoriously fast smoker as well. High rater, fast smoker. I rip him. He rips him. Um, Go ham, yeah, and I like him. <laughs> <laughs> what was the BLP chopper? Yeah. Oh, BLP no. kosher? Kosher, that's what it is. Um, yeah, it's very, it's like creamy, great smokes. Again, fat clouds, man. This thing is... Fat clouds, dude. Fat clouds. Yo, bro, Smoky it's going to be real hard to take you serious when you got... This guy fucking saying shit like fat clouds. Come on, man. What are you doing? Dude, that's how I... It's part of my rating system, okay? If you ain't producing fat clouds... Come on, man! If you ain't producing fat clouds, you ain't on my watch list. <laughs> but um, V-Cut, I'm glad I went with the V-Cut. Great draws every time. No issue. So, now, when I read about this, this said this was medium to full. I don't personally feel that's that strong, 
but I'm not getting any body to this, man. This thing is no. this is a pretty light cigar. Yeah. I, I would say yeah. this is not. Uh, I think it's maybe it, well. maybe it'll uh, you know strengthen up a little bit as we get into it, but. Oh, pairing wise, it goes very good with this whiskey. I'm it a, does, dude. This whiskey really, really does. This whiskey's great. Yeah, like, yeah. This I'm, is really I'm a fan. Good. I think it, it's weird that those Tennessee whiskeys are starting to like lose they're, the bite. No, not lose the bite, but like uh, they're starting to grow on me. Well, we got a lower lower proof on this ninety proof, but you get that mix of undisclosed Indiana whiskey and then the Tennessee uh, process. Is this a Greg Metz product? <laughs> well, I mean, we, we pretty much said MGPI. If it's sourced out of Indiana, I mean, there's really they're, they're only the one. There's like one major yeah, stop. They're the, they're the biggest. Um, again, it's got that Tennessee process, the mellowing, which I, it works really well with this. They're the Barry Wood <laughs> of sourcing. Just Dropping the hammer down. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Dropping it down. But yeah, this is, I think, uh, like you guys said, light cigar. Very easy to smoke. Perfect size, too. Love the Perfecto. All right. So now, curious. I wonder how we'd feel if we were smoking the Toro, which is like a 6x56. It's different. And, I mean, we do seem to prefer Perfectos, Figurados, you know, Torpedos, uh, Vitolas. But I don't know. I, I do appreciate like a, a true Toro. Obviously, fifty four would probably be yeah. like, you know, a little bigger than your standard Toro. But yeah. well, remember, this is fifteen sixteenths. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> my apologies. Sorry, Davidoff. Yeah. Bougie ass shit. Fucking. You can't even like go down to the lowest common denominator. <laughs> Just leave it right there at fifteen sixteenths. No division at all. It's a very strange. It's just number. Random. Do you think that's part of the metric system? Because they're like, uh, no, that's no, that's just nope, Davidoff nope, nope. being difficult. No, nope. oh, okay, nope. I, yeah, just, that would be millimeters. Yeah, but isn't Davidoff like Britain based sort of? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. but that would be millimeters. But they're just being extra boozy at this bougie at this point. Boozy. Oh wow. Chuji. Chuji. Oh god. <laughs> no Chuji <choo-gee> here. <laughs> nah, at wrong. this point, people are probably like, what are they fucking talking about? Dude. All right, so I forgot to mention. <laughs> That that is like the after herf, like Gen Z word of the week, and I also am the host of the after herf show. So if you're new to following us, be sure to tune into that as well. We always appreciate more uh, more listeners, grow our gang. So obviously, I want to take this point. I just want to or this moment, and I want to just say, you know, we are on all social media. We post a lot of cool pictures of the the things that we smoke and drink. Uh, for anybody looking for crazy suggestions, we do really we really smoke and drink a lot of different stuff so if anybody's ever looking for you know cool content to look for we're on instagram facebook uh youtube if you want to watch the whole show which is a different experience but it's way more fun on the youtubes i'm a visual listener so i really like that's how i like to watch a podcast i I need to see what the fuck i'm looking at uh, even like old Howard Stern back in the day, you know, it's fun to listen to Howard in the morning, but like you could get like the, the Howard pass and you could watch all the shows. Dude. There's nothing like watching like Beetlejuice or like, oh, uh, God. you know, all the crazy, uh, kooky characters he has on, <laughs> you know, I, I just, I feel like I need to visually watch things. So that option is available for you guys. If you're visual listeners, mm-hmm. make sure you check us out on the, on the YouTube and you do subscribe because yeah. the subscriptions definitely help us out. Obviously, they're going to help out uh, Cigar Hustler Universe, and we're all going to grow together, man. So Yeah. Uh, I think this would also be a nice way to touch into, I guess, the next thing we're talking about. In honor of this being our first episode on Cigar Hustler Universe, we're going to do a giveaway for you guys. Hell yeah, another giveaway. Now, back to back. To figure out the terms for this giveaway, you are going to have to follow our Instagram page. There will be a post when this episode is released, and all the instructions will be there. So we're each going to give away a cigar, and what do you think? T-shirt? Some, some little uh, down to swag? I would definitely say some DTH swag. Shirt is needed. couple for stickers, sure. shirt, a yeah. couple cigars. Yeah. Nice little introduction to the uh, Cigar Hustler universe. Yeah. Probably should follow those guys as well, too. I mean, I mean, if they're listening, I'm sure they're following. Yeah, they better. <laughs> yeah, right. You better. Grower gang, stay strong. 
Caleb has a lot of isms on the show. You guys will soon understand this. He says a lot of weird shit sometimes, <laughs> but we love he, him anyway. He is the show's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful short king. Some would say I we do, love him. Some would say I also have some sort of a tism myself, but you know, that's neither here or there. I, I think they just tried to say you're retarded. Possibly. Yeah, retarded. Yeah autistics on you're something for on, sure on the spectrum for sure you're on the spectrum definitely dude. you're on the spectrum yeah, yeah. love you though yeah. i love you like a brother just like the, you I'm, I'm just the character like between the two of you <laughs> love you guys i'm no main character but i'm a oh. character i don't know man you definitely you run our after her show yeah it takes a lot of big de right there Okay. Oh, God. Okay. All right. All right, All right buddy. All yep, right. yep, yep, yep. Cringe. 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 Cringy. 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 <laughs> Bruh him. Lock him up. Bruh him. Bruh. Bruh. Bro, I, I got a count going. Just to let you guys know, uh, new listeners, there's a bra count on some of the weird things I say. That's only eight for season two so far. Only eight, so not bad. Wow. Sometimes I get eight an episode. We might be... <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Dude, you are... You're definitely out there. We're, we're going to have to do now going forward is like for the YouTube, there's going to be like a little ticker anytime it happens and it'll go from like eight to the next one. Oh, like, yeah, you just bring it up randomly through yeah. the episode. I'm once he right gets, br- once he gets broad, ding, like it goes up. So was there anything more that we wanted to touch on on this uh, cigar ban in Mexico? I mean, I feel like we covered it. It's just so ridiculous. And then obviously if you guys are going to Mexico, you know, the enforcement Seems pretty, pretty lax. I don't understand how this really is going to work, though, especially, like, with such wide public areas and beaches and, like, Mexico is so dependent on tourism that it it just doesn't make sense. That they're not going to want to piss off, like, people that are spending money, especially when, on a resort, they're going to be charging a premium for cigars. I got a question for you guys. Have either of you guys been to Mexico and like experienced the beaches and like how they sell cigars on the beach? So a friend of mine once told me, if you buy a cigar on the beach, that shit is fake. Oh, it is 100% fake. Yeah. It's dog shit, <laughs> short yeah. filler, cigarette fucking bullshit. It comes in a glass container and it looks cool and yeah. it has a fake Cohiba fucking band on it. If you're buying cigars on the beach, that shit is fake. Sick. I've... I've actually had one of those fake Ahibas in the glass tube, and I'll tell you what, it actually smoked like pretty well. I'm not gonna front; it oh actually my did smoke. God, bro, dude! Not I, I, John said this too, though. Yeah, John said that. <laughs> did did like really? Yeah, yeah. he's like, like, oh, it shit, it smoked pretty good, but I know it was bullshit. <laughs> yeah, it's, you could tell by the the wrapper on it. It was like it looked like it, instead of like that Cohiba black, white, and gold, it was like taxi cab yellow. <laughs> it, it is one of the most. Bootlegged. reproduced bootlegged faked cigar company in the world so be wary of those cohiba fucking cigars fugazi bullshit yeah i mean you're there's a lot of security features in our true cohiba band yeah so just make sure you do your research on those if you are smoking fucking cigars in mexico on the beach like caleb i mean enjoy your smoke on the beach if you don't get a fine or a ticket for it but you know yeah. you're on vacation relax it so just chill you might just go to mexican jail uh, Who knows? It depends. Hopefully I mean, not. What, is, it, is it like pick and choose? Like, oh, yeah, American tourism? Yeah. Give me Jail $20. Forever. Or Lock 20 Oh, bucks. no, definitely. It has more to do with tourism, probably. It's probably a crazy fine. Would you not yeah. imagine that? Absolutely. Now, I mean, for that, buy your cigars from a fucking humidor when you're on vacation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> for sure. You probably will pay more money, but. Why not just bring your own? Customs is a bitch sometimes. I I'd you, rather pay customs and smoke good shit than I wonder if you smoke dog I, shit. I wonder now if going to Mexico, you can't bring your stuff like in your... That's actually a good yeah, question. Yeah, I wonder if you can. Know. I'd imagine... Like you bring the travel humidor. Hmm. Like, what happens? I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I guess we're not going to vacation anymore in Mexico. Well, not that I've ever been there. No, because tobacco isn't banned for purchase. Yes, correct. So and it if wouldn't... you smoke it in a private area, but... What's considered a private area? If you're if you're a lounge, if probably. you're on vacation, is your resort considered a private area? I think so. I feel like you could argue that because they are Can guarded. You articulate it they, a little bit. I don't know. No. They are guarded by the military. If you go to like um, Cancun or anything, when you when you enter, they got the military guard. So maybe it is sort of a private thing. I don't know. I'm guessing you probably have to go to a lounge. Would be my only guess. It's probably indoor. I don't know. 
Who knows, man? People are... This whole thing is dumb. <laughs> I I don't get it. I'd have to agree to that. Now, curious. Are there any, like... I, I'm sure there's going to be this, and this might be a dumb question. Are there any cigar factories in Mexico that you could think of at the moment? Like, obviously, I know the big brands, like, are mostly out of the Dominican, but... Dominican, Nicaragua, Honduras. I'll look it up. Miami. Uh, there's some factories in the United States. Uh, yeah, like, because I would wonder... I guess that is a good question. Like, who's producing them, then? Um, well, there's Te Amo. Uh, we talked about that with Miguel. That is, like, the one of the oldest cigar productions in Mexico. Um, it looks like there is also Santa Clara. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, um, in the Los Tuxlas region. So, it's in Veracruz. It's the largest tobacco region in Mexico, so there you go. Well, that makes so much sense. Why? Ban it. Ban them. Ban them. What do you think of this whiskey, man? 90 proof, man, but this is like... I like this shit. I feel like these people are going to find out that I'm probably the, the biggest <laughs> drinker on the show. Uh, I don't know if that's the Irish in me or the Polish in me, but there is a... Uh, Good combination here. Oh, hey, it is called the Clover. Irish Clover, man. Here's the, Fuck what it. is it, faith, love, happiness, and what else does it say on the bottle, Jay? being able to do cocaine but not smoke tobacco. <laughs> yes, in Mexico. in Mexico. Only in Mexico, though. Only in Mexico. Fucking Cancun, uh, Cabo, fucking Puerto Vallarta. Hope, faith, love, and luck. The luck clover. Of, luck of the well, I mean, that makes sense. No tobacco, but all the fucking blow and molly. So, just to touch on some shit, all right? Obviously, we joined Cigar Hustler Universe, so I, I, I just am, I'm kind of curious. What do you think that these uh, new listeners, new audience, and obviously new friends of the show, what, what, do you, what can they expect from us? I mean, we're definitely going to say some pretty wild shit. Like, we don't hold back. I like to think of us as the everyday guy talk for cigars and all that. Like, we try not to make it our main focal point of the show. Obviously, it's our overarching theme. But I'm never going to be that guy that's going to be like, oh, I get the manure notes and the, you know, leather. Get the fuck out of here. Like, listen, I could tell you if it's good. You know, maybe I smell a thing or two here. I'm sure my palate's gotten considerably a little bit more refined since I've been doing this so frequently, but I don't know. I'm not a snob like that. I want it to be relatable to everybody who enjoys these products. Now, I know we run two shows. Only one's going to be available on uh, Cigar Hustler Universe, but Caleb, uh, what what do you think that they're going to be able to expect on this show? And if they want to become a listener of the After Her, what, what, what can we expect from that? Well, on this show, you definitely get some laughs, you know. We're funny. On both shows, you're going to get laughs. Second show is going to get a little crazy on the After Herf, but here we're going to keep it funny. We still have another segment coming up, which you guys hopefully will like, and you'll get a little insight onto what uh, Jerry and Gio do professionally. Yeah, yeah, I, I knew we were going to get into that. I'm glad that we didn't bring that up at first, but obviously with a little insight to what we do, uh, I think that that segment becomes a little more fun because, yeah. you know, you know. It, it, it'll make sense in a little bit. Yeah, well, absolutely. like like we said, you're gonna get a little bit of cigar reviews. We're not, you know, we're not the best cigar reviewers. Clearly, I'm one of the worst. But um, <laughs> I, I I can't I can't I gotta kind of be honest here. I don't think that you can run a cigar show and just talk about cigars for an hour and a half. I I can't. I don't know how our audience is. I don't know. I I can tell you about our audience. None of our audience wants to listen to anybody talk about a cigar for an hour and a half. When you're sitting in a cigar lounge, you're sitting in your local brick and mortars. You're not talking about, oh, man, this is uh, like Gio said. You're not talking about the notes you're getting on a cigar. You're having conversations. Sports. A cigar is as great as the moment you're in. You know, like I don't know if that makes a lot of sense, but you... When you're smoking a cigar, probably remember the moment more than you remember the cigar. Was it a great experience? Was it not a great experience? Do you agree to that? Absolutely. I mean, they're celebratory cigars. They're stress relief cigars. They're like, I'm going to fucking kill someone if I don't have a cigar cigar. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you look at me like that? 
Because you are a very frequent of that. <laughs> <laughs> very true. But we I all, need we my all stimulants. Get we all get that. alcohol, energy drinks, caffeine. Yeah, nicotine. Bring them on, baby. I love stimulants. I don't think alcohol is a stimulant, though. Uh, no, that's it's a downer. A de- <laughs> that's a that is a downer. Yeah. It's a downer that I enjoy. Give us all the teens. Creatine for uh, in the gym, right, Gio? Protein. There you go. Hey. Give, us all, give us all the teens. D-Bowl. <laughs> you fucking asshole. TRT. All the good shit. Give but, us all that good shit, Gio. But, but yeah, to wrap up what you're going to get, you're going to get cigar reviews, some cool, <laughs> some cool cigars that we smoke, some great whiskeys that we drink, some cool pictures if you're down to follow the Instagram, man. You should be following it. Um, we also have the Facebook too. Make sure you check that out as well, and the TikTok that Jerry runs yeah. until TikTok gets banned. Um, but yeah, you're gonna get some laughter, some cool picks, great cigars, yeah. great whiskey, and we'll give you some great in between banter. That's what you're gonna get from Down to Herf. I feel like you forgot to mention good interviews. Oh yeah, I did. Yeah. You did. You did. We have some great guests. Uh, check out all the old episodes too, man. They're yeah, out, a, a lot of our old stuff. You can kind of get an idea of what we're we're about. Uh, like I said, the the main the main meat. Yes, we talk about... You son of a bitch. I, I did it because <laughs> Caleb did <laughs> Caleb said main meat. So I'm going to say main meat. <laughs> no the, more meat talk. It's weird. <laughs> no more meat. But listen, That's, the main topics of our show are never really going to be about the cigar and the whiskey. We're always going to talk about something more important. Something I think you guys are going to enjoy more than us sitting here talking about a cigar for an hour and a half. Yeah. That being said... We talked a little about the Mexico cigar ban. We talked about if it's criminal or not. Maybe we get into that first segment that we usually run. All right, guys. Jerry, roll it. This segment is called Patrol Gone Wild. Patrol Gone Wild. We're doing it big. And Ah. Caleb, I want you to say a little about what it is. All right. So if you guys don't know, Jerry and Gio... They work together. They are police officers. So this segment was brought to you by these guys and what they encounter almost on the daily crazy police stories, Um, whether it be your local crackhead, a crazy (laughs) chase, a crazy story that these guys experience. But when, you know, they don't have a story like that, we go out there and we browse the interwebs and we try to find our own crazy stories. We get clips, we get videos, and we'll play them for you. Now... I like the breakdowns just because obviously it makes life easier. So this is going to be quite entertaining. Are we going to have Caleb start us off? So we do have three clips today, uh, which is real nice. It won't always be three. It's not always going to be three. Sometimes it's one. Sometimes it's a story that me and Gio actually experience personally. Uh, But this week we just did three clips. We obviously want to show you guys our funny side a little bit. Uh, obviously, not all three clips are going to be funny today. Some, One is actually pretty fucked up. Yeah, but sometimes they are like it's pretty morbid. Yeah, they could be pretty bad. Well, I mean, I think that just comes with the territory. I don't think uh, it, anyone that knows uh, anyone in law enforcement, those people are not usually the most uh, <laughs> the most normal. I guess you would say, but have the best stories. Yeah. Law enforcement officers always have the best stories. All right. Well, uh, who's leading off? Well. That's up to you. Oh, dude, do we have three or do we have four? I don't know. Dude, I think there's three. I mean, I have one. I think one. there might be three. You have one. Caleb, go ahead. Lead us off. All right. So mine is out of the New York Post from a couple of days ago. We have Florida Man. <laughs> looking at you guys down there at Cigar Hustler. Um, Florida Man <laughs> hides from cops in pile of insulation during attempted home burglary. Was this Boots? <laughs> it could have been. So I, I think we got the picture going up, right? All right. We got a picture going up. So a guy broke into a house on Sunday. And he hid in a pile of construction insulation before he was arrested by responding officers. This is out of North Fort Myers, Florida. Um, Davis, 44, got himself stuck in an itchy situation. (laughs) The would-be burglar climbed into the house's attic, buried himself under the insulation when officers searched the home. Now, they couldn't find him for like 45 minutes until he was caught. Uh, The photo shows Davis buried in the duct system of the attic. Covered in white insulation. So he's covered in ash. He's buried. Talk about itchy, man. This guy was definitely in deep for it. And, you know, he was arrested um, for burglary. Attempted burglary. Because I don't think he actually got to steal anything. He was caught before he can get away with anything. Why do you say burglary like that? 
How are you supposed to say it? Burglary. 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 Why do you say it like that? It's my accent. It's that like South Cheektawaga thing going. It's on. that 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 uh, northern bullshit. Nor I ain't. Oh, it's not, it's southern Cheektawaga. Yeah, but I'm sure to some of our listeners, we probably sound oh. insane. <laughs> yeah, we probably we talk do. so fucking fast too. We probably sound can- Canadian more than. Yeah, I we probably <laughs> sound like Canadians, eh? Hey, hopefully okay. not. But yeah, they they found him as they saw the broken window up in the attic. Um, he's got this guy's got a lengthy criminal history of theft, drug charges. So, kind of fitting. Kind of, you know, I guess being caught in itchy insulation is also uh Gio, have we ever had like, a situation where we remember, like, you remember that time we had that guy, uh, we were clearing that uh, that house, and the dude was hiding in the bathroom? That was up there. I was more so thinking the guy that tried to pretend to be a tree. That, no, <laughs> that, that was fucking hilarious, too. Didn't you guys tell that story before? Yeah, like we, did. Early, oh, we yeah, did. We did. So. Yeah, on an earlier episode, we talked about that. And like, like, didn't the neighbors the like point up, him remember out? Remember the guy who no. was like, oh, I was just up here to take a shit. <laughs> you remember that? He broke into a house. He was clearly <laughs> squatting. And he Doing claimed, crack. yeah, he was just smoking crack in the bathroom. He claimed that he was just there to take a shit in the abandoned house. I love his excuse, too. Like, he's like, now, this is across the street from a public grocery store that you could use the restroom at. His excuse was, oh, I know the person that lives here, so I went in to take a shit and broke the window to go in. Little does he know, we know no one lives there. Right. Fucking idiot. You dummy. You fucking dummy. You know what clip I want to hear from that one. Do I? Yeah. You're the lowest of the low? No. Same you person idiot, said you it. You idiot. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. Our fearless leader. You idiot. <laughs> <laughs> But love that. Yeah. Oh, man, that's dumb. this is like, first off, does he get like a like, did he have to go get checked out for like fucking mesothelioma or some shit after that? I feel like you got to have a special. I think he definitely ordered meso book after that. Right. Because like, the picture is like, I thought it was like a zombie or something. Like It looked like someone <laughs> coming out of the fucking grave. No, no. He was like in straight insulation. If you've ever even just done insulation. I'm sure somebody out there is listening right now. They're like. I know exactly what the fuck he's talking about. That fucking sucks. So the, Imagine that feeling. So police had to get him out with non-lethal gas. That's how he eventually came out. <laughs> <laughs> all covered in insulation. All like oh, all white God, and dude. it's got like that like that, that sucks. What is that material? Like it sticks to your clothes. Fiberglass. Like, fiber, there you go. Yeah. It's all Fiberglass stuck to insulation. Him. God, yeah, this shit sucks. But uh yeah, man, that that's that's uh it seems pretty standard. Uh, I want to get into a little clip. Boots, stay out of the insulation. I love Florida Man stories. I want to get great. into a little clip. I don't know where this is from. I don't even know if this is a parody video, but I feel like this is a pretty funny one. Uh, this is a clip of some kid. Uh, I know. Apparently, he witnessed a homicide. I know who this guy is. This is probably most definitely a a, a, a fake. Whatever. Who a gives goof, a shit? A goof. It's this shit funny. is really funny, but. Imagine this scenario for a second. Middle of our tournament where my friend John said he found a body in the bushes over there. I ran over there because I'm a healing monk to try and help, but obviously my magic wasn't strong enough because the dude's body was missing a head. So my friend decided to try and use a necromancer spell, which didn't work, which I knew it wouldn't. And apparently we contaminated the crime scene because that spell uses a lot of glitter. (laughs) All right, so... uh, Obviously, if you watch the YouTube, uh, you'll be able to see this clip. We'll obviously pull it up for you. But for you listeners, this is some nerd like LARPer dude who's dressed like a medieval knight with like chain mail talking about how they're um, like the Dungeons and Dragons fucking LARP nerds. Sorry if there's any out there that listen to the show, but like, think you the guys are fucking models. nerds. I love I, you guys. I love it. I love I, anytime we get a LARPing thing, I love talking about it. It's so funny to me. I just feel like uh, as an officer, right, you come on this scene, uh, they call it a dead body, right, Gio? We we roll up to this scene and there's a bunch of fucking LARP nerds fucking <laughs> throwing glitter all over the dead fucking body. Like, oh my God, dude. Arrest, like, arrest I don't. Them. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I think what at that point. What the fuck is wrong with you? Look, like, what are you doing? What the fuck are you doing? We'll bring, oh, we we'll bring him back. Body, so yeah, we're gonna bring him back to life. His head's missing. Uh, the head's not on scene, but we'll try it. Like, but think, you know, there's people out there that are serious about that shit. Yeah, yeah, they believe it. And the fucked up thing though is, is like, 
yes, it's clearly parody, but it's not far out of the realm of possibility in 2023 that somebody would do some dumb shit like that. You know, I uh, I saw that the dude that you love on uh, Instagram, uh, Duke Gomez. Yeah. He has a hoodie that I really want to... Re- I actually am really considering buying it. Is to it wear the, on the show. Is it the bring back bullying one? Bring back bullying. Because <laughs> I feel like some people, they need bullying. I agree. It is... Ap- I agree. I'm sorry if we have any victims of bullying. <laughs> sorry. Obviously, you've made it this far, so you're tough enough to, to realize that, like, if this shit is real, these people need to be bullied. And my best advice to anyone who's being bullied or has been bullied, my best advice by far is have a sense of humor and uh, make your bullies laugh or make fun of them. I mean, maybe not. Don't make fun of them too much that they want to beat you this up seems even more. Awfully, <laughs> awfully specific, Caleb. <laughs> you know what? I remember. Did, fresh- were you a victim of bullying? I, I, you know what? Someone tried to bully me uh, freshman year in gym class. Didn't work out too well for them because I had the whole gym class laughing at them instead of people clowning on me. That's how you do it, folks. Do you want to elaborate on it? No, it's pretty uh, graphic. I, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty graphic. Okay. The things they wanted me to do in the locker room, and I flipped it around on them. Okay. Let's just say it involved gay things. Okay. And I said, if you want to go there, that makes you gay, not me. Okay. I won't say what they wanted me to do, but I flipped it around on them, and man, it worked. It worked out for you. Short kings. Short kings. Gotta have a sense of humor. Big brain, short king. That's right. Big reviews, too. (laughs) (laughs) This is a clip that Gio wanted us to bring up. Uh, I feel like we'll enjoy. This is out of the New York Post. Uh, I think they just reposted. Uh, obviously, yeah, the, they have the the TikTok of the guy who initially uh, posted this. But you want to get into this, Gio? All right. So there's a police standoff going on. And now, if anyone who is a listener has worked in law enforcement, you know that when you are holding a scene, no matter what is going on, it could be clear as day that they cannot go in this particular direction and people will lack the common sense and wherewithal to realize, oh, maybe I should find a different route or I can't do that right now. Okay. And lo and behold, this wonderful video of a police standoff where there's about nine squad cars, it looks like, outside of this home. The Amazon driver, no fucks given, just walks right up and makes sure that package gets delivered. Let's go to the club. Amazon, hard at work. (laughs) (laughs) In the midst of a standoff, he's going to deliver his package. I don't give a f- <laughs> Yo, that's so good, man. So, this thing got like over 2 million views. Like, on TikTok bro, or whatever. This dude, I think they just... Oh my God. They made him fucking leave, I'm pretty sure. I, with, yeah, yeah, there they go. Oh, he the, crossed the, the tape. Give yeah. us the package, bro. Yo... All I want to know is, <laughs> fucking, this driver is amazing because I can't even get FedEx to drop my package off when I send it to a building that has a fucking door guy that's holy job is to sign for packaging and FedEx won't deliver that shit. This guy is ready to just be like, yo, fuck it. I got to get my shit out. I love the last tweet, too. Uh, I know Amazon has him real stressed to do something like this. (laughs) Like, you got to imagine, is there some kind of pressure that we don't know about? If you're an Amazon delivery guy, please reach out. I'd love to know, like, is there, like, standards? Like, Oh, Amazon's, like, I guess notorious for, like... They're hard pressers. And, like, if you, like, fuck it up, they'll just fire you and hire someone else. Like, Like, that quick. Like they're obviously, I would assume non-union, right? Yeah, they're like is a big push to unionize and Amazon. Obviously, I don't think Bezos wants that. But dude, you're a billionaire at this point. Like, maybe you should unionize where you've got your employees that are willing to fucking walk into a police standoff here. I hope that guy got Employee of the Month. He deserves it. Listen, I wonder. I want to know. Did they get their two day Prime package? (laughs) <laughs> they did turn him around if you see the clip they did okay. walk up to him and say like what the fuck are you doing because i know if it was me and you we'd probably say dude what are you doing go like there's clearly tape here i mean maybe just give it like a good old launch pray to god it's nothing <laughs> fragile hey can you put this on this address over here yeah right here's your bottle of down to her <laughs> single barrel pick <laughs> <laughs> i love that 
There's a couple bottles left for all you new listeners out there. Yep. Nine. <laughs> Nine. Nine. <laughs> Unstickered, but who cares? We can slap a sticker on and just write a funny number on there, like 369. You guys deserve it. 420. <laughs> That's a great one. I love it. Yeah. Whatever. 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 So we'll get into this last clip. Uh, this is a pursuit in the California Highway Patrol. I do want to put a disclaimer on this one. This is graphic content. This man did perish to his injuries. Uh, so what happened was this guy stole a... California Highway Patrol police car, thought it was a great idea, took them on a 90-minute chase. They tried to uh, strip spike him several times. He was approaching the the spikes and decided it was a good idea to just jump out of the vehicle at 46 miles per hour. Uh, For any of you guys that have uh, soft stomachs, just throwing it out there, maybe... Don't Skip watch this. Part this. For the next, like, Graphic content coming 15 up. 15 seconds. So here we go. Yeah, right. You're oh, on, uh, Dennis, Dennis, I want to bring back Stu. Stu, what's going on? He's jumping out of the oh. car. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh. He just bailed out of the car, out of a moving oh. car. Look, it just crashed into the light pole. Oh, my goodness. Not a really ideal situation. Uh, I cringed a little bit. Did you? A little yeah. bit. Just I hate seeing people skid on pavement. It's not nice to see. So, who was the other guy running too? By the way, was that a like a passenger? I actually don't know who that guy okay, was, but yeah. clearly he was very close to the where he bailed out of the car. But uh, while going forty six miles per hour, the stolen car's door suddenly opened and the suspect leaped out to the road. He is dead, unfortunately for him. Obviously, we know people do stupid shit, but we don't want to see anybody die from these stupid things. Uh, you know, as soon as his feet touch the ground, his head immediately slams backwards. Uh, That'll do it. Really, really terrible. The uh, suspect hasn't been identified yet, but, you know, despite the officers attempting life-saving measures, the driver's major injuries were, unfortunately, he was pronounced dead at the scene. So... RIP to him. Obviously, we don't want to see anybody die, but this is the kind of shit that happens in the world. And this is from the New York Post. Uh, I can post a link to this in the in the description. But yeah, man, really, really, really shitty. Uh, we deal with shit like this sometimes. Um, you um, know, people getting hit by cars, shit like that. There's a moral of the story here. Don't steal cars, especially police cars. Big, it big never no, big no, no. ends well. No, no, it, it really doesn't. Like, it really does not, and I, I think me and Gio, from a law perspective, uh, law enforcement perspective, we can kind of say also there's not a lot of things that you can do that get you in a lot of trouble. Stealing a patrol vehicle, that's one of the ones that are really going to get yeah, you fucked. Yeah, in, in New York, we don't, you know, we there's very lax laws, but that one they take seriously. Yeah, yeah. I wonder why he jumped. Like, why? I think it's. Uh-huh. They said he was uh, upcoming to the the spike, the spike strips, and they said that he, I guess, knew he was going to hit them at that point, and maybe just I don't know, played Afraid a little too much Grand Theft Auto, and just uh-huh. thought he could just jump out of a fucking car and I mean, live. I mean, forty six. I guess most people don't know. It seems kind of slow, but I guess when you jump out and you hit pavement, that ain't slow, man. That's tough. Yo, twenty miles an hour will fuck you up. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Like, yeah. Especially a head injury, too. No helmet. No, I mean, obviously not going to have a helmet on in this situation, but still, Listen, even with a helmet, you're going to get fucked up. All right. Take this away from the person that was deceased. Oh, my God. If I'm that officer whose patrol car got stolen, I am just, and the, the dude ended up dying, the amount of oh fucks I am doing. Oh, sheesh. I need another pour. <laughs> not, not ideal. Sheesh. Like, not a good day. I... There has to, unless, like, this dude, like, because he was, they said he was responding to a call. Like, did this dude, like, get out the car? Because apparently he was in an accident. I noticed in the article they said something like he, like, crashed his Corolla. Maybe this dude thinks, like, oh, shit, like, maybe I'm hammered or this dude's going to find out something or I have a warrant. I'm thinking maybe he was under the influence of something. I feel like a lot of people in those scenarios, just based on personal experience, panic and do a lot of stupid shit when they think they're going to get in a lot of trouble and it just turns out to get worse for them uh 
Well, like, because, I mean, that's not uncommon, like, you know, for to, like, just leave a car, like, running while you're going to handle a scene, but, oh, man. All I know is that dude had to do a shit ton of paperwork. This is not bad boys where, you know, they're back, you know, having a shootout the next scene. So I do have to touch on that. It's really funny you bring up bad boys. Uh, the first scene of Bad Boys 2 absolutely infuriates me. Because Insane. You would be on administrative leave forever. <laughs> that scene forever, was crazy. if not lose your job. I know in Florida the shit's a little crazy, but you that captain would be doing more than woosahs. <laughs> That guy would be like, oh, my God, I'm fucked. We're all fucked. The Everyone's whole, the fucked. The whole department would be fucked. Fucked. That, was cr- that opening scene was crazy. You got caskets flying out with bodies, <laughs> shooting everywhere, <laughs> cars wrecked everywhere. Dude, uh, shoot out on what? Uh, Not just cars, dude. All these things were like beautiful sports vehicles. Oh, yeah. Like, for- like, oh, my God. I can't even imagine. Cars over $75,000. They were insane cars. Top of the line. Semi-trucks, like bridges. Bullets everywhere. Bullets everywhere. Flying machine guns to help bullets. What I love is they never miss an hour of work. <laughs> no, the well, in the first one, like, after they had that, like, they kept, like, Martin Lawrence there to do paperwork. And he's like, no, you be Mike. Yeah. But, like, that only served the plot of the movie for, like, three seconds. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's one thing that, like, cop shows and movies, they don't... Uh, really handle the discipline aspect too well. So that would probably be a lot, like a good reason why uh, a lot of police officers and people in law enforcement they're really not going to be about like watching police shows because I think about like these FBI shows that they show on like uh, late night television. You know, like the the NCS FBI, like all the shit that they put out. Yeah. These people in one episode pull their gun out, shoot several rounds you shoot your gun in real life you're on a administrative leave for god only knows how long like a day maybe two, at least a day. a day they never show the paperwork i mean after well, the, you shoot your gun it's not good they never get sued <laughs> no yeah. there's no lawsuits yeah fucking hey yeah but i don't know like for any of you guys that are interested in actually a true law enforcement show, you got, like, The Wire and, like, NYPD Blue. I feel like The Wire is the the truest police show that you can possibly watch. Yeah. When I watch that show, one, it shows... Uh, it just shows what it's really like to be a police officer. So if you do have HBO Max and you are really curious what it's sort of like to be a cop... I think the wire is really the best depiction of what it really is, and it uh, and it shows all sides. Like, yeah, they do a good job of that. It, it's just a fantastic show. Might be up for a rewatch for me. I could go for that. All right, do we have any other uh, Patrol Gone Wild stories? That's it, dude. That's There's it? four. Right, cool. That was four, dude. Nice, Caleb. Do you want to start us off in uh, in the cigar review? All right. Before we get into that cigar review. Can you kind of describe our little system? So we go on five categories, and I'm going to let Caleb just touch on that a little bit, just so our audience knows how we do our cigar review. All right, so we do a thing. We got the A, B, C, D, E's of cigar rating. So we do appearance, burn, construction, draw, and enjoyment. We give an overall rating, and we do give a mean score as well. So... I'll start off first. We got the Davidoff, Year of the Rabbit, LE, 2023 Perfecto. So appearance with the double band and the shape of it and the Vitola. Giving it an 8. Uh, burn, I'm giving this a 9. I really had no issues. Didn't relight it at all. Just one light at the beginning. Construction, giving it a 9.5. Beautifully constructed. Uh, nice ash if you guys saw Jerry and Geos throughout the show. Uh, mine fell occasionally when I put it down, but... I want to put it down a little too hard. Um, I went with a V-cut. I'm notorious for my V-cuts. I just love doing it almost on every cigar. Uh, if you see my Down to Herf shirt, the back says, it fits my mouth. I got the V-cutter on there. Um, enjoyment, I gave this a uh, draw. I gave it a 10. Perfect draw. Uh, big fat clouds all the way. So, Davidoff, you, you won me over with this one. Um, enjoyment, I gave it a 9. Um, I wanted to give it a little higher. I don't know why something 
was missing a little bit for me, and I can't put my uh, flavor profile or my mind on what was missing. But nonetheless, I really enjoyed smoking this up this with you guys on this episode, being that you know big announcement, first one coming out on the Cigar Hustler podcast network. Um, that gives an overall score of forty five point five. I gave us a ninety one. So I really enjoyed it. I um, and if you're gonna ask me, is it worth it? Like our title set is gonna say. Definitely worth it. If you can, fifty dollars. If you can just pick up a single of this, I think anyone out there would enjoy this. I even if you have a low end budget, or you could afford it. Um, if you're gonna buy it, buy one, enjoy it, save it for a special occasion with your boys, uh, anniversary, something special. Definitely save it in your humidor, but totally worth it. And I'm glad we smoked it. I love that. That was a great review. Uh, my review is. Pretty similar to yours, Caleb. Uh, the appearance I gave this a nine. It's a pretty cool cigar. I love the the zodiac calendar, the Chinese zodiac calendar. Uh, double banded. You have your uh, standard white Davidoff band, and then you have the Year of the Rabbit red band on the cigar. Uh, really, really cool. The burn I gave it a nine. This thing is just uh, very consistent. I mean, this thing is just it, it stays right where it needs to be. There's no boating, no canoeing, none of that bullshit that you deal with on a, a bad cigar. Uh, the construction, I gave it a 10. I mean, this thing's a tank. Uh, I'm sure Gio's going to touch on the construction a little bit. I feel like you go a little in-depth into the cigar reviews. But uh, this thing, it ashed when I wanted it to ash. And uh, the ash holds on, too, man. This thing is a stack of dimes, and it is really, really, really good. Uh, great construction. The draw, like Caleb said... Uh, Straight clouds, man. Uh, very smoky cigar. Uh, with the V-cut, I did the same thing as you did. Uh, the Calibri V-cut. Very, very nice draw. I gave that a 9 as well. The overall enjoyment a 9. Really, really like this cigar. Bringing me to a 46 overall. 92. High rating for me. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. After we smoked, like, I'm a big fan of the Davidoff Late Hour. Uh, I think that's a really, really good cigar. But I was a little skeptical on the Zodiac because of what happened to me with the Year of the Ox. I had not smoked the Year of the Ox or the Year of the Tiger. But this thing was awesome, man. Uh, the, maybe it was the Vitola for me. I'm a huge sucker for a Perfecto. But, dude. 92 overall. I got some notes on this. I got like a creamy coffee taste. Uh, maybe that's just my palate a little fucked up because Gio gave me a cold earlier in the week. <laughs> uh, but we'll see what happens. Gio, what did you think of it? Because I really, really like this. So my appearance, I actually gave it a 9.5. Uh, you got the red and gold band, which is, you know, the Chinese New Year theme. So they always do that with their Zodiac releases. The box, if you guys saw it, it's a unique box. It's actually, each cigar has its own little uh, cutout, so it's not like your traditional cigar boxes where everything's laid out there for you. Uh, Davidoff, really, I would say with this one, is like up there with like a Fuente in terms of presentation. I said it before, I think Fuente is one of the brands that consistently with their higher end releases will get a, almost a 10 every single time for presentation and that's kind of my standard and this is right up there it very very close to a 10 like it's hard to get a 10 and it always should be in my opinion uh burn i gave this an 8.5 i had to touch it up once and that's a good sign for me considering i talked a lot today uh usually i t i give a, a a huge curve when that happens but this was very good construction man this thing got a nine for me this thing Held up beautifully. No cracking, no peeling. The wrapper slid right off, so you didn't have to worry about potentially, you know, ripping the wrapper for it. Just to touch on that real quick, I don't want to interrupt you, but you're absolutely right. Uh, you notice, like, some cigars, you struggle to get that wrapper off? Yeah. Both of these wrappers came right off when, when they got to that point that they needed to. I really like that. Hate yeah. hate when that happens, when you can't get the band off. It sucks. Yes. Yeah. And you, you, you risk the wrapper being messed up or your, you, ash, you, is your ash is falling off. I mean, this thing yeah. just did what it needed to do. Yeah, no prominent, like, veins that would cause, like, any distress to it. You know, these are stored very well. Uh little nervous because we did order these kind of late in it here after that, and we didn't know, you know, we had to actually go to UPS to pick these up. You know, had to make some, uh, pull some strings to get them. But even in the shipping, there was no issues right there. 
draw, I gave it an eight. I think I would have enjoyed it a little bit more if I, you know, straight cut it. I mix it up, you know, depending on what I'm getting, but V cutting, you know, it still produced a ton of smoke. It wasn't, you know, I still think I've smoked cigars that have produced more, but I got to actually experience the cigar without like, is this thing fucking, you know, working on me or tunneling? What? You know, I enjoyed it. That's not a big deal for me. Overall enjoyment. I gave it a nine. I really enjoyed what they were trying to do with this cigar and I appreciated, you know, the complexities of it. The only reason this didn't really get like a 10 on that scale, and I'm being truthful, is the price. That price point, man. And that's what it's going to come down to. And, and I hate to touch on this point. What's the consensus? Is the year of the rabbit worth that price point? So me personally, I'm going to say no, because at $50, I expect, I expect a cigar to be you know, very tobacco forward in terms of like strength, full bodied. Like I want to really experience it. Like this cigar, if we drink a higher proof point, I don't think we get to taste much in it. Like, so this is, this is something I actually had on my notes. Yeah. It is a very medium body cigar for what it is. Yeah. Uh, when you pay high price points on whiskeys, right? Uh, you're expecting a bang. Uh, I want to feel the cigar. Uh, I feel like I could smoke three of these, chain smoke them, and not get that cigar buzz that you know some guys chase. Some guys like to get melted into the chair. Yeah. Uh, this is just like, like Caleb said, this is an occasion cigar. If you're just trying to sit there, you're trying to celebrate something, uh, yeah, this is a really, really great cigar. But I don't know if it's worth $50. There's so many better cigars out there that you can get that are less than fifty dollars. So, and that's nothing to disrespect yeah. Davidoff. Like, but man, you can get something for twenty, thirty dollar range, I guess. Right? You, is, that's what you're 100%. saying. Hundred percent. So, are you a yes, no, or are you an I don't know in between? Would I smoke it again? Yes. Would I pay fifty dollars for it? No, I wouldn't. Like, especially right now. Like, yes, this is not a you know cheap hobby by any means but there are some very very like well-made cigars out there that i would say are on par with this but you know half the price my suggestion take that 50 bucks go buy a nice five pack of something that you really like you know, so many stores are doing like 50 dollar sampler packs you could have five cigars and try you know, brands you've never had before. Yeah. I now, like that. if you love Davidoff and, you know, you, you know, that $500 for a box doesn't break you or you're a collector, sure, by all means, like, you know, it's that whole Pokemon syndrome that you got to collect it all. We've all been there with certain things. Especially Jerry's, certain brands. Jerry's like that with everything in his life. <laughs> oh, geez. Why, why you got to do me like that, Whiskey, man? cigars, whatever it is, that's Jerry for you. But He's got to have them all. I got a nice collection of a lot of things. Make sure you reach out. <laughs> oh, Gio, what was your overall score? Uh, I know so you that went actually rating. totaled up to a 44 for me for an 88 overall. All right. All it's right. got a very high rating. Like, I enjoyed it, but, like... That's a high rating for you. Absolutely. We said you were notoriously lower than us. Yeah. Caleb's the notoriously high guy. Hey, but you, you got me by one today, so, you know... I, listen, I, I really enjoyed this cigar. Uh, 92 for me is no joke. I'm usually teetering between like, oh, were there issues? Like, I really try to pinpoint things that I could take points away for. Not a lot to take away here, man. I mean, look at this thing. I mean, look at the look at the trail of smoke just coming off this thing right now. I mean, I am down to like the nub here. I got maybe like two, three, four good puffs left, and Damn. and then it's done. I mean, this thing was really it's a phenomenal cigar. But at the price point of $50, save your money, go get something you like. Yeah, I mean, again, Davidoff, you know, I think you redeemed yourself a little bit in my eyes. Like, you know, I I get it. You know what you're doing. You're, in, you're Davidoff for a reason. You're kind of the OG that was boutique before boutique was a thing. But, man, 50 bucks. Like, I keep coming back to that, and I just think of all, like, I could fucking go buy a twelve dollar cigar and then put fucking thirty eight dollars in my gas tank. 
I, 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 I Welcome get, to New York. I get it. I get it. Uh, fifty dollars is a lot for a stick. Um, five pack sounds reasonable. It's it's a better deal. Um, I, still again, two hundred fifty bucks. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean like a five pack of something else. Oh, okay. I see what you're but saying. um, I get it. Like for the occasion, I think buy it for the occasion or keep it in your humidor to show off. Um, overall score for the three of us for our first episode on Cigar Hustler Podcast Network, ninety point three three. Um, for a banger cigar. One that we, it was probably like a must smoke for us, and we clear- have been talking about smoking the cigar for what two months, and I'm glad that we finally did it. But I gotta say, again for the second time, there's a lot of better options. They're not better as in far, as far as like profile and how great the cigar was, but that price point is an absolute killer, man. Just to point it out, okay. Three cigars, hundred fifty bucks plus twenty dollars shipping. I'm at a hundred and seventy dollars. That is a box a of box. some other brands. It's a box of something that you very like. good brands as well. You know, you can get a box for hundred seventy bucks. And man, I just like it's not to me. I I can't justify it again. Like if I was gifted it, I'd love it. But. You know, this is definitely one that if you got it, you know, you smoke with the boys and enjoy for that experience. But if this is something you're just trying to have, you're going to just sit on it and treat it like, you know, try and go through that box over 10 years or something. I don't know. I wanted to just touch on this whiskey real quick. Uh, This is a really good bottle. Do you know what the MSRP on this is, Caleb? Uh, uh, About $70. I think I said it earlier, but about 70 bucks. And I actually think... Uh, great price point, uh, especially given that it's a single barrel, the legend behind it with, uh, Bobby Jones. Would I buy this? Yeah. hundred percent. I'd buy it. I agree on that. I second that for Tennessee whiskey. This is, this is fire, man. This is really, really good. Uh, Gio, what did you think of it? I was a fan of it. I mean, like I said, I got a lot of honey. It was very easy to go down. Like it didn't overpower a very like cigar here, and I like that. Like we don't do a lot of ninety proofs. Yeah. Usually no. the shit that we drink is over a hundred proof. Oh man, if we would have paired this with like a fucking uh, horse soldier, I wouldn't. <laughs> uh, my enjoyment for the Davidoff might have been way the fuck down. You know, great pairing. Um, something we try to work on is pairings. Um, as far as I say, this is probably one of our better pairings that we've done. Yeah, really flowed together very nicely. I mean, for those who don't have clover available. I'd say maybe try and find something with like a sweeter finish to it. You know, your rum or cognac or maybe a port cask. Something like that would really, really blend well with this because then it's the the drink is a milder finish and then you still get to enjoy and not be just destroyed when you're smoking the cigar. That being said, Caleb, as the episode's winding down, take us home, baby. All right, guys, make sure you follow the Facebook, the Instagram, Got to subscribe to that YouTube. Uh, guys, you need to look for us on the Cigar Hustler Podcast Network. Um, you can get that on all streaming platforms as well. You have to search them. You'll find us. Um, but make sure you follow that TikTok as well, the Facebook, Instagram. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channels. We need that grower gang energy. So come follow us. Uh, we look forward to our new partnership. we got a lot of good things coming. Great cigars coming up next. Even great whiskey as well. So I want to take this, this moment to just... Uh... Fellas, cheers to being on the number one cigar podcast on Podbean. Cheers. cheers. So cheers to that, and we look forward to the future. And guys, to follow us on Instagram, for those of you that are listening, it is Down to Herf Podcast. H-E-R-F. <laughs> for most of our cigar guys, we know what Herf is. Right. But that is a play on Down to Earth. Yes. Down to Herf, baby. Hey. That being said, we'll see you guys next week. Same time, Wednesday, same place. Wednesday release. It's going to be Wednesday be release. Wednesdays. Wednesday releases. And we look forward to seeing you guys then. Cheers.